What's up guys, and uh, welcome to the first um, episode, I suppose, of Rome 2 Fundamentals, which I think will be a useful series for some people, um, to kind of talk about the, the basics of high-level uh, competitive play, and I think to illustrate that, I have a bunch of replays here, all of a single matchup, Galatia versus Arverni, um, because I think that it illustrates many of the, the ideas for a fundamental Rome 2 play. Obviously, not all of them, because it is missing some crucial aspects that other matchups do have, but it, it has some of the, the main aspects, and so we're going to focus um, only on a few of these replays, but a few different uh, main aspects of the game, and those are going to be uh, horse archers or jab calf play, uh, which I think has been more important in this patch than ever before, and the level of play for those units have been increased highly. So jab calf, um, fighting the missile war, and the use of of different types of, of missiles, uh, missile units, and then some of the more crucial ones, which is like cab survivability, uh, infantry, the infantry war, and charge, the charge game, and um, yeah, and maybe maybe some late game stuff. I'm not sure if any of these replays really have the best evidence for that. So um, first, let's get into the first replay that I wanted to show. Um, I'll be playing both sides of the matchup. I think mostly Galatia, though. Um, Galatia is a bit more of the dynamic faction in this matchup, although a lot of people favor Arverni. I'd actually say Galatia is better if played perfectly. It is just, uh, well, difficult to play compared to Arverni. But, uh, so we're first going to start, um, I guess with this replay, so let's get into it. Alright, so I think before we actually get into the, any of these battles themselves, um, we should really talk about the matchup itself, just to, to know what we're getting into here a little bit. Um, what are the strengths of each factions, and, and why are certain things uh, more important to do or for each faction. So, Galatia is definitely uh, a very balanced faction, they have a lot of options, um, and their units are very strong. Oh, and by the way, for most of these battles, the rules are 4 same, 6 infantry, and uh, 6 melee infantry, and 12 total infantry. So, and, and three or four force archers, which never really gets broken anyway. Um, so, they'll just be aware of those rules. So, Galatia is a very balanced fashion. Um, they have, they're very strong in all departments. Um, but their weakness, I would say, is that they do not have a lot of variety in each unit compartment. So, they have very strong melee infantry, they have very strong missile units, they have very strong cavalry, um, they have jab cav. But the problem is they don't have a lot of options. So, for example, they have the Galatian Legionaries, which are one of the strongest melee units in the game, very, very powerful, but they can only bring four, and there's six melee infantry, so the other melee infantry are relegated to being Galatian Swords or Naked Warriors, or both. Um, so you know you're going to have at least two weaker melee infantry units, whereas a faction like Arverni can bring four Chosen Swords and two Oath Swords, for example. Um, and, and this issue persists for other units, too. So, for example, for Cavalry, you have you can bring two Cappadocian Cav, the best melee cavalry in the entire game, uh, for their price, by by quite a, a large margin, except for maybe back to Noble Horse, and you can bring Noble Horse. That's great, but you can only bring two Kappa, Cappadocians, so you only have two melee Cav plus your gen. You could bring two Noble Horse, but then that's going to cost you a lot of money, and Noble Horse for the price are really actually not that good. So now you only have three Cav, and that's, you know, important to note because the rest of your army is is going to be depending on your Cav, like your infantry and your, your archers especially, um, to protect them. So now you only have three melee caps, so it's very important to keep these guys uh, protected and safe, otherwise you're just going to get run over by more numbers from the other faction. And then you have spears, and your spears are not really that good, it's probably one of the weaker aspects of Galatia. They don't have any good mid-tier spears. Galatian spears are decent for the price, but they lose to the chosen uh, the spear warriors uh, of Arverni. And then you have Holy which are great, obviously. And you have these nice uh, mercenary horse skirmishers. You can also bring Galatian Raiders, but I find that in this matchup they're actually pretty useless. Because mercenary horse skirmishers can kill archers, and they kill the cavalry much better than the Galatian Raiders, because they have 41 missile damage. So, that's sort of the strengths and weaknesses of a Galatia faction, and it's very useful because you need to play as an entire army. You can't just like run people over with your infantry, or run people over with skirmishing, or something like that. You need to play with your entire army, and that's why they're a great, great pick uh, to talk about fundamentals of the game. 
Um, now Arverni, on the other hand, and Falder is playing Arverni here, and you, you can kind of see the advantage of this faction. He actually has brought kind of an interesting build, but it will serve the same purpose nonetheless. So he has two Osworn, so he immediately has elite melee infantry that I have no match for, even though Galatian Legionaries do okay against them. Obviously, straight up, it's not really good. He has mid tiers and cheap Celtic Warriors, so you can bring as much infantry as you want. You can bring any mix of these guys. You can bring one Celtic, two Oath, and three Chosen, two Celtics, two Oaths, and two Chosen, as Father's done here, or four Oath, uh, four Chosen, and two Oath, whatever you want. A lot of options there. Next, you have unlimited supply of melee cavalry, essentially, because you can bring four Heavy Horse, and Heavy Horse are pretty good, and you can bring Noble Horse, so you can bring up to, like, basically up to five cavalry if you choose, and that's, you know, five very good melee cav, so you're gonna have these cav, which can affect the melee battle, uh, a lot more than you need Cappadocians for Galatia, because these Cappadocians cannot be wasted, um, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. And finally, your spears are excellent, these uh, spear warriors are the best, um, Spear, except maybe Scutari Spear are actually better. I'm not really sure, even though they do cost a little bit more. But these Spear Warriors are one of the best uh, spears in the in the price category. For 490, you can get javelins and excellent melee stats, um, at least versus other spears. And you have Levy Freeman, of course. And you have Celtic Slingers, and we'll kind of get into the Missile War, I think, in, a, in other replays. But I will touch on it briefly. So those are the advantages of each faction, and you can see Arverni is much more straightforward. They, they rely on their infantry and their cavalry. Um, and they can kind of brute force it. So, let's get into the replay. Uh, quickly, my army, I've kind of gone through it, but four Galatian Legionnaires, one Galatian Sword, one Naked Warrior, three Archers, uh, these are Mercenary Spear Archers, of course, two Cappadocians, one Noble Horse, three Mercenary Horse Skirmishers, four Galatian Spears, and one Levy Freeman here. Um, of course, Fado, two Celtics, two Oaths, and two Chosens, four Heavy Horse, one Noble Horse, three Celtic Slingers, looks like three Spear Warriors, and two Levy Free. So, the first um, thing that we'll talk about in terms of fundamentals is your Jav Cav. And Jav Cav are so fucking good in this game. Like, I think before they were underrated because of the, lo of the long lines, but now that cavalry are stuck in this boxy formation, these guys just absolutely destroy cavalry. It's not even funny, especially this 41 missile damage Jav Cav. It will do so much damage. So, that's nice. And obviously, when you have a Jav Cav versus no Jav Cav, it's so beneficial. You always should bring Jab Cav if your opponents cannot bring Jab Cav. Because what it does is it forces him to bring off infantry units to defend against these Jab Cav. But the Jab Cav are more mobile than these infantry units, so you really have to bring like many, many infantry or turn around your slingers, all this sort of stuff, just to defend against these stupid 390 cost Cav. And then they just sit there and in the late game, they're alive and they can chase down slingers and stuff like that, and obviously harass cavalry in the right moment. So. Fundamental thing one is how are we going to use these jab cap to the max effect? The first question to consider is what's the situation here? And remember, we were talking about one of the weaknesses of Galatia, so we only have three cab here, right? So at first you might say, oh, I'm going to go behind. I'm going to go behind here. I'm going to force him to bring Levy Freeman like all the way back here. Sure, in theory that's okay, but it's not always the best move because one issue with that is then these cavalry can bomb forwards into your army without actually being harassed very much by these jab caps. So you can think what you can see one thing I'm doing now is we're not really ready to engage yet. So I'm gonna pull this cab behind. That's one unit behind already. And it will be able to harass these rear units. And it's so fast that if he just brings one Levy Freeman here, I can just run past it. Let's see if he turns the slingers around. He didn't do that yet, but you can see I'm already harassing behind before we engage. But you can see this cab I'm keeping out on the flank because I do not want him to be able to run his cab around the flank. Let's think about what this means. Um, <coughs> basically, now if one one of the big advantages Arverni has against me right now is his five cab to my three cab, and what that means is he can get his cab if he can get his cab around the flank to like these locations while our infantry is fighting over here. Easy rear charges and you know side charges or go after my my archers and these archers are very crucial for Galatia. Um, so, what, is, what does this mean for me? And also, if I use this cab to time down, that's one cab versus one cab, and he can bring, he can shoot it, he can bring support, all that stuff, and make this a tie, and then he has these extra two cab that I can't really account for. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put my cab, my jab cab, right here on the flank, and I'd say, if you want to go behind, man, you're going to get, you're going to get shot the entire time by my jab cab, and that means that you're going to lose a ton of men very quickly, and it's going to make any flank pressure from this cab very ineffective because it'll be low HP and so my Cappadocians can just charge it and eliminate the cab unit pretty much entirely and once the cab units are down to like 20 men they become functionally useless because javelin volleys, slinger volleys will just kill them and one charge will kill them. So if he wants to go to the flank now what does he have to do? He has to bring a unit like a Levy Freeman 
to literally screen my jab cap the entire way. But these levy freemen are very slow, they're infantry compared to cavalry, right? So that means this cavalry has to flank at the speed of an infantry unit. And that's very useless. It's so, it's telegraphed, I can see it coming, I can deal with it much faster than if you can just run this cavalry on the flank and charge. So now he has to bring this levy freemen and it has to be out of position screening this jab cav the entire way just so this cav can get to the flank. And by the time it does that, I can just counter that move very easily and I can, you know, prepare for that uh, eventuality because I'll see everything else happening. So that's one crucial thing is positioning your jab cab properly is very crucial to what you want to do in the battle. If, for example, you have a skirmish army, like a complete skirmish army, like say Parthia or something, then maybe it's good to just leave your jab cab behind. You don't care about them flanking because their cavalry in, against Parthia, for example, is so precious. If they lose their cavalry, they're dead. So they are, they're not going to be flanking. What are they flanking for? You'll have cataphracts out here. But listen to the case here. His cavalry is the sh is stronger than my cavalry by pure manner of numbers. His cavalrys are very good in one v ones against the heavy horse, but just by having five versus three, he'll always have cavalry that I can't account for with my own horsemen. So I don't want to go necessarily always behind, but I do want to keep the pressure up, and I want to make sure I'm maximizing the utility of these jab cabs for the entire battle. I want him to be thinking about it with his slingers, like maybe facing his slingers backwards, because then he can't shoot my archers, or he can't shoot my infantry. Or I want him to bring Levy Freeman or, or Spear Warriors back here, because then I have more spears and they're ready to fight, uh, while his are back here doing nothing, essentially. And that's the power of the jab cab. Keeping units out of the fight so that your other, more important units, like infantry, can become more powerful. So let's let's see how this plays out um, as we go into the battle here. And you can see I'm kind of pulling to the flank here. I want because this is the flank that my jab cab is uh, is here. This jab cab is behind, and I'm going to fight on this flank. It's where my naked warrior is. It's a bit stronger than that uh, Galatian sword. So now I'm going to come forward. And let's talk about the second um, fundamental here, as we watch my jab cav, um, so keep that in mind, but the second fundamental, because it's going to happen, is the infantry war. And we'll get more in depth on this for other battles, uh, because it'll be relevant in every of these battles, but just quickly watch, I don't want to lose that many Cappadocian cav in, in this war. It's always useful to charge uh, cavalry into infantry if you can, but for me, if I take a javelin volley, I lose 10 men, now I just have so, and my, the rest of the men will be weak, or weaker on HP. It's not worth it. For Safado, he can afford to charge one or two of these heavy horse in, because it will do a lot of damage and help him win the infantry war. Because right now he has five cav, and his infantry is not necessarily stronger than mine, because he brought two Celtic warriors. He does have two Oathorns, but I have four Relation Legionnaires, so I'm winning a lot of these fights. So he does need to use his cav to help him win that engagement. And also, let's think about the spear war, and the spear war is... is crucial, because the spear war determines who gets the first charge with their infantry. My spears are worse, which means when his spears charge in and my spears charge in, mine are going to lose, so I need to charge my infantry in first um, to help my spears out. Otherwise, my, my spears just lose for nothing. He has like 50 men in these units, he just charges them into my infantry, and then he can follow up with his units and get a free charge. So, there's always a consideration, which is how much cav am I willing to lose to help me get the better charges and therefore help me win the infantry fight. So let's see how that goes in this battle. Uh, I guess I can just bring it up. So we're moving up here, and let's just see how I focus my targets. And also just be aware of my archers. We're going to talk about archer use in a different game, um, because this one he only has three slingers, so it's not a really big deal. And of course, these archers are not going to waste their ammo on slingers. And you can watch what I focus, but let's hold on and watch the infantry war. Now what I'm doing here is I'm double targeting this unit, because I'm going to throw two volleys of javelins into this one unit, so that I can help, uh, help win here. Here I see a, a good target. This lovely Freeman has been drawn out by my jab cove, and you can see I'm just running away so he doesn't javelin, javelin me. But this unit's out of position, and this Celtic Warrior is an infantry unit. If I can get a charge on that, it's so valuable. Um, and he at most gets this one javelin volley, so I'm, I'm willing to take that risk because this is a free infantry kill, and it'll allow me to roll this flank, and that becomes sort of my, my plan for the game. So let's just see it here. I'm double javeling. Uh, single javelining the rest of these guys, so I'm going to lose these two, but hopefully I win here, because these guys lose 10 men almost, and you can see I only lose 4 men here, so I'm at a big advantage. Nice from Safado though, and you can see this is the this is the danger, right? He pulled, he saw it coming, he pulls this unit out, and now he gets a free javelin volley with his Oathorn, and a free charge with my uh, with his heavy horse, and that's a very good engagement for him. Fortunately, I do have Lady Freeman here in support, so I can help tie this, but again, if I lose a lot of Cappadocian caps, it's not good for me. And my archers are shooting a 
infantry unit, the best target on the field. I could go for the general here, actually. Cavalry are always a good target for um, archers, or better target than infantry, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but anyway, let's see. What? Uh, let's see. Did these Oathworn get a good javelin volley? They do. And you can see I lose 10 men almost on the charge here. He loses only one man. My Levy Freeman will come in, but since my cavalry unit is engaged already, I don't get many javelins um, off. Here's Fado is... So I'm going to lose it. This is a bad engagement for me already. He pulls back his heavy horse. They do lose a lot of men because my Cappadocians are so much better. But the only saving grace for me is that this Oathsworn has now used up its charge and it gets a uh, Javelin volley in the flank here. And this Galatian Legionnaire will do well in this fight. Um, so Fado is kind of making a mistake here of charging in first. He really doesn't need to do that. But it's possible to do this and just cycle out before my infantry charges. So you can try to do that. Um, but it's not really necessary, I would say. Here, his Lovey Freeman gets a Javelin Volley, but it's mostly going to hit my Lovey Freeman if we look at the trajectory of those Javelins. It's not really dangerous. Um, now I'm shooting the Oathorn, obviously the most valuable target. Let's see what he's shooting. Looks like this Glacial Legionnaire, or my Slinger, or my Archer unit, so not a big problem. Here, my Celtic uh, Naked Warrior gets a nice charge, but I already lost 20 Cappadocians. Not great. He only loses 16 Heavy Horse. Very good trade for him because he has so much more cap. But now look at these jab cab in the rear, nothing to really stop them from shooting. So I'm going to get some nice kills. And this jab cab again, moving it now that the battle is starting, I'm moving it to the flank. And now again, I've prevented this flanking maneuver pretty much entirely. Unless he wants to go like through this smaller gap, but then I can hit him with uh, the Cappadocian for free. Now he's pulling out his heavy horse here. My Cappadocian's retreating to safety. You want to get it out of the slinger range so it doesn't get shot up in the back. And you can see, once my Glacial Legionnaire is charging, I'm saving my Spears. These guys are 100 men, very valuable unit in the late game. This unit's at 120, so I'm keeping my Spears in reserve, and I'm getting free charges in here. Here I can afford to go for this charge on the Spear, because I have a second unit here to cycle with. This uh, Celtic Warrior is being used to screen against this um, Abbey Horse, like I said, but now look what I do. I just get the free charge here. He does get a counter charge, but I really like this fight, because I have better support. Uh, my Glacial Sword is better than his Celtic. And I'm getting a good charge into his heavy horse with the Cappadocian. The Cappadocians are so much better. And, even better, I have this horse skirmisher to shoot into the blob uh, if that becomes the case. Now you can see this heavy horse, again, needs to be screened by this Levy Freeman. This Levy Freeman is still doing nothing. I cycle out my Levy Free and my Naked Swords. Again, cycle charging, we'll get into that um, in a different replay to talk more about the infantry war. But right now, let's just keep focusing on sort of the, the Jav Cav play and the cavalry survivability, which is the second thing we were kind of talking about. So again, he gets um, his heavy horse in here, they lose 9 men, I lose 4 men. That's a decent trade for me, it probably is going good on the HP battle for me too, because I also kill a Spear Warrior, and my Galatian Swords are getting into this Celtic Warrior, and they're going to win this fight. Maybe not with this uh, Hellenic Free, but that's another unit committed, and when if he commits, uh, if he ever commits, let's think about this for a sec too. If he ever commits these Levy Freemen, these Javelin, uh, these Jab Cap, just get in the rear for free and start molesting 2 Cavs and just completely destroy them. Now look, his general's moved into range, because again, he was general's back here, but then my jab cap forced him to move up so he didn't get shot in the back. But now he's going to take massive fire from three Syrians, and these are the most valuable shots I can possibly get. Even more valuable than his Oathsworn, because his Oathsworns are good, and they will win, but I'm winning in a lot of other places with my infantry, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, here, let's see what's happening. Here, again, I'm trying to get another charge with my Cappadocians. Here it's pretty good, because he's not going to get any javelins. Um, just because I out microed him basically, and he was trying to charge a different unit. Naked Warriors get a free charge. Excellent. This unit's dead, and the Cappadocians are going to lose like two men. That's pretty valuable. He does maybe get a, a couple of Jalen Volleys though. He does, but it doesn't really cost me that much. Again, this unit is weak, but I'm I'm happy to use it at this at this place because I want to win this fight on this flank, and I have really good spear support, and my other two cab are very healthy, while his cab is being shot up pretty significantly. So it's, it's a really, it's a bit of a risk, and it, I left it in for way too long, and that's really what's going to cost me there. Um, but, it's okay. The other thing is, you can see, I'm not using my general ever. The general is so valuable, and you do not want to use him. He should always be a last line of defense, because think about this. Here he's using his cavalry, his numbers, to get around the flank. But again, I'm not letting him around more than one place. He's jab cap completely preventing these cab from flanking, so he's only able to get around the flank in one location, right here, and immediately when he does that, I'm bringing my jab cap, I'm already shooting this unit up, uh, it's already lost 10 men, and my noble horse, 60 men, completely uh, healthy, is going to just kill it uh, if he tries to expose. Now he can't run away, where is he going to run away to? This javelin cap would just kill the entire unit. This Cappadocian does get uh, destroyed, so that's not good. And I do have a lot of spears here, 56, uh, 118, so 
Spears are obviously the foil to Cavs survivability because they're not a unit that you want to use in the mainline melee too often. These guys are only here because there was a heavy horse here. I'm going to keep these guys safe and they're going to help me defend my archers and my and help support any cav fight because Spears in the cav fight obviously very very effective. So again, now these job uh, these these noble horse have nowhere to run. If they move forward, they're in, inside my Syrian archer range. If they run back, they're getting shot by my jab cav. And again, he committed this Levy Freeman to help in this fight that he's losing. But now these jab cav are just so valuable. I haven't really lost any men, so they have full javelins. They're just shooting up any any heavy horse that get near them, any noble horse. And this cav Cappadocian cav is low, so he might want to try to push down this flank, but again, he needs to use an infantry to screen. I can pull out my Levy Freeman and block the screen, and I have this spear, Galatian Spear in here, which I can pull out at 80 men to help support this cav fight, and my Syrians could then shoot it. So, my Spears are in good position to support, basically. Now I've pulled out this Cappadocian cav, 55 men, and I actually, I didn't, I kind of mismicroed this jab cav unit, which is unfortunate. You really can't micro these units because they just die instantly, the entire unit. So yeah, I lost this entire unit, but I will kill off the heavy horse. So my uh, Captain Ocean Cap get into the heavy horse and destroy it. They'll win pretty easily. And you can see I still have two Cav in reserve here to protect my archers and all these spears, which I really should pull out um, now that this heavy horse retreated. And now these um, four skirmishers are just harassing here. He could go for a play here where uh, I don't really have any units to block him, but I guess my noble horse is, is sort of in position. So now here's here he goes again with his cav flank. He kind of caught me at a good timing where I just ran this unit away so I didn't get shot. Um, but you can see, I, what I do is I instantly pull out two units uh, because he pulled out this unit. This Galatian Spear is here to just absorb any cav presence here. I'm shifting my Noble Horse. My Cappadocian is here at, at 20 men, so it's not completely dead. Um, and, and it'll be very useful to help tie these units down so I can shoot them. My Naked Warrior is going to go for a charge here. He kind of expects it though. It's a pretty good play from Sephardo. But, uh, yeah, so he's going to get a nice charge here with his Noble Horse Gen. Into this Naked Warrior, he's really good charge. That's very viable. These guys don't have Javelins, so there's no risk. And over here, you can see, look how easily these Heavy Horses are just dying by Cappadocians. He does get a Celtic Warrior here because my Galatian Sword ended up tied down with a Levy Freeman, so that's not really ideal. But this Heavy Horse is losing so badly that it's going to rout, and these Celtics will take forever to kill anything. Um, let's see, over here... Again, his heavy horse charges into my Galatian Spear, that's fine. I can pop cavalry counter tactics and counter charge with this Cappadocian Cav. Gonna be able to tie this all down. My general is in reserve here, waiting for anything to get through. Heavy horse being shot up, they're pretty much dead and useless because my spears can just kill them. And my Syrians are untouched, and because of that, they can shoot up his infantry. So, the combination plays for Galatia working out very well here. Uh, here he popped Frenzy Charge, kind of a dick move, so I just ran away. I said, whatever, you have like seven men in the unit, I'm just gonna retreat. And here, now that these heavy horse are almost dead, I don't care if he even shoots my cab with his slingers. I'm just going to wipe this unit out and then kill the slingers with my cab. My other jab cab is behind his general, just shooting up the general, down to, thir to 40 men or less already. And again, winning this cab fight super easily, even though this unit was much healthier than my Cappadocian cab to begin with. These Galatian spears just ate him up, pretty much. And over here, another heavy horse is down, and now he's just running out of cab. My general is 60 men, hasn't been touched. This Cappadocian men, half strength. And this one, a third strength, but he only has nine men here, 57 men, so one healthy unit here, but it's still probably lose to these 29 Cappadocians with any amount of support. And then his general, which is already pretty low, down to 30, 30 men pretty much. I did miss micro another cav here, but it is doing massive damage to the general anyway. Here, I just shoot this uh, heavy horse, charge into the slinger. He's doing a good job of shooting it, though, with his other units. Um... Here the spear is breaking through, so now once my infantry starts to win in some places, I can use these spears aggressively to pin down his cavalry um, because they can just chase the slingers down, so that's useful. And you can see I'm kind of just surrounding and developing. I'm winning on this one area that I want to win in. I have reserve units all over the place, and this is now an excellent position for me. Now you can see yeah, another spear here. I just chase his general. I'm just going to chase him down. If he wants to charge, he's going to get uh, shot up or charged with his Cappadocian unit. This naked sword can cycle back and kill this Celtic warrior, and here he does get a nice rear charge with his 56 men, but I wanted to just let him charge in here so I could just shoot the unit. I'm not going to commit my general, because I don't want to commit my general and die. There's an Oathsword behind my lines now, because this is the one place where I did lose. Oathsword versus Galatian Leisure, as you'd expect it. I want to only charge these Oathsword when I can be assured that the general is going to be very, very safe, and here's an excellent position. These 
There's no real men here. I shoot up this uh, heavy horse. I'm chasing with spearmen. You can see his general goes for a charge, but again, into my spears. I'm happy to take that. I counter charge with my uh, Cappadocian Cav. And now I have a free Galatian Legionnaire, which can come over here and kind of finish off this Oathsworn. It's got more men and the generals there. So, completely winning. And you can see, actually, these are my horse skirmishers over here, chasing down his slingers because they live to the late game. So, that's sort of two crucial aspects. How do we use the Jab Cav to maximize the efficiency of our Cav? And, and you want to, one of the keys there was, we want positions behind, but we also want positions on the flank, because preventing flanking was I, was crucial. And like I said, if I have Parthi in there, my horse archers are just behind. Because they want to be getting rear shots on infantry and uh, on cavalry, not really preventing flanking. That's not really uh, a necessary, you know, aspect for my guys, because he's not going to flank with his cav against Parthia. And if he does, maybe I can move my HA over there and, and deal with them. So that's, that's one game. Um pretty pretty conclusive I would say you can see how my spears were used my Galatian swords were my uh, were alive very healthy general didn't get touched by Cappadocians even though I lost a lot of men in this unit to begin with they ended up staying at that I didn't use them for anything more risky uh, later on so that's pretty useful um, next we're gonna talk about um, archer archer usage and I did make some mistakes in this game with my archers but they are uh, the learning mistakes, so. Alright, so, let's get back into this game. So in this game, I've brought exactly the same army. You can see I've almost deployed exactly the same two. And Ragnar now with uh, Arverni, he has a pretty similar army to what Svato had. He's got the three Spear Warriors, the two Levy Three, the five Cav. He only has one Oathsworn, but he does have four Chosen Swords and one Celtic. So basically replaces a Celtic um, with a Chosen, replaces an Oathsworn with a Chosen. Um, yeah, and he has four Slingers as well. So that's, yeah, other than that, it's exactly the same. So now we're talking about the Archer War. And... You know, keep paying attention to the other things, the Jav Cab positioning and the Infantry War, and we'll get into the Infantry War um, with another another replay. But now the Archer War. What's what's crucial to know about Archer Wars in general? Well, Condition 1. At what time do I want to accept an Archer War and just sling it out with my enemy's uh, missile units? When do I not want to do that? Well, one rule of thumb to, to note is, are my Archers more expensive? My guys cost like 520 per unit. His cost 280, so he's got 560 plus 560. That's 1120 in four units, and I have 520 times three is 1560 in my three units. So for me to make an archer war with his slingers is completely ridiculous because mine cost less, have less ammo, and will actually do pretty poorly against four slingers. One thing to note about four slingers is four slingers tie almost any three missile unit combination in the archer war. I think maybe like. Cretans might win, but they'll use all their ammo. So here's the thing. If you're ever facing four slingers, do not shoot them. Do not shoot them under almost any conditions with your archers, because archers just don't do very well against slingers. The slingers, they can focus what I would do. Okay, here, if I have the four slingers and I get an archer war accepted on me with the three Syrians, focus these two Syrians on the flank with two archers, and then let this unit just use all of its ammunition trying to, trying to pick up the slack. Um, your slingers will literally survive with more uh, men and ammo, so completely useless. What do archers want to do instead? They want to shoot cav, and the good thing about these series is they're very survivable, um, if they, especially if they're spread out. I really should be spread out, and that's the one thing I think I made a huge mistake in this battle, was not spreading my archers to two, to two ranks, or at least three ranks, um, because when they're in that formation, they have 40 armor, so they do not die very quickly to slingers that have 20 attack. They will really not die. Um, so what you can do is you spread out and you just shoot high value targets. Oathsworn, Cav especially. Cav dies so fast to archers and even slingers. You can always focus Cav if they're in range. Um, seriously, it's so it's so easy to, to kill off entire Cav units like that. Especially when they go in for charges and stuff, immediately switch your target to them. You'll get rear shots, they'll do a ton of damage. So, uh, I guess one thing before we do move into the battles, when do I want to accept the Archer War? Well, let's say you have four slingers. Then it's almost always good to accept the Archer War, especially if they have, um, 
let's say they have like three slingers, one Balearic, and you have four regular slingers, accept the shit out of that Archer War, because you'll do fine, you'll lose, because they have one Elite Slinger, but on the bright side, you'll use all the ammo of that Elite Slinger. They have faster fire rate, so they're going to use their ammo so fast, they'll kill off one of your Slingers, they'll start shooting your other Slinger, and you say, like, I do not care if you do that. Literally, I don't care, because my, the Slingers that you faced are going to be very low, and the one Slinger that Balearic kills will die, and then kill off your other Slingers, but all of the Slingers will pretty much be low on ammunition. And what you do is when they route, you just keep running them back in. They'll have full, full morale again, and it'll take them a very, very long time to completely route off the field. Don't let them get focused, though. Um, routing units that get focused have a much higher chance of just routing completely and not coming back, which is obviously terrible. Um, yeah, so if you have four slingers, you can accept the archer war, but you always want to. Um, you might want to just use them for focusing targets. And one thing that I've learned is four slingers can focus targets almost as effectively as three archers, three Syrians. Not three Cretans, of course, but three Syrians. Um, if they get the right angles. Fighting using archers is all about the angles, unless it's cav. If it's cav, you don't care about the angles because their missile block chance on these shields are very, very low, uh, even if the shields are big. For infantry, though, it's all about getting left, uh, right side in, uh, unshielded, obviously unshielded side, or rear shots with your archers. One thing I've learned that you can do with archers is you can, uh, it's actually an infantry tactic, is to engage at a slant. If you, and this is only if you have the archer advantage, really, otherwise it's kind of pointless. Um, you engage at a slant where your left, you know, like, okay, if my infantry line is engaging, I want to engage my units like this. What does that do? It means the enemy units charge in here, and their right sides, this is the right side, right, is exposed to your archers, and you just shoot the uh, you can just focus centrally, uh, especially, like, central units. They'll be completely facing your archers, and you just blast them on the unshielded side. So that's a quick infantry tactic. Otherwise, you can, you know, position them smartly, get flank shots, get rear shots that kind of thing, save your ammo for the late game, all those kind of tactics are viable. So, let's get into this and see what I use my archers for in this battle, and what uh, Ragnar uses his four slingers for, and we'll see how it compares. Another thing with archers in general is you cannot let them get pressured, and the, the, the type of pressure I mean is like an infantry unit that breaks through a gap and gets behind. This is especially uh, important when you're trying to kite, or not kite, but just use your archers to, um, kill units while your infantry holds. If you allow the units to get behind, now your archers are just running away, you can't really kill them with cav very quickly, and now they're not shooting, and then your infantry all dies, and then you lose. So you have to be very careful of that um, aspect. And one thing I've done is I've moved my archers all to this left side, because that means that they're going to get more of an angle on the right side of units. So that's a quick uh, technique. Here, running forward here, he's shooting my spears. So far, it's not really a bad target. You can see he already killed 10 Galatian spears, so that's not bad. I shoot spears all the time. Uh, because that's a very helpful for winning the infantry war. Here I don't get a jab volley, so this is a fine charge for his heavy horse. Don't really lose that many men. Again, double, double uh, javelin volleying this unit, and then coming and charging into this unit, so I can't get a, another volley. He's really shot up the spear, so that's a very valuable kill from these uh, Celtic Splitters, because it doesn't really cost them anything. They have 25 ammo. Here I use my cap nicely. To, like, I only lost two men, so that's good. Uh, but let's see, what do my archers shoot? Now there's generals in range, I really should start shooting this, uh, you, know, you can see I fire at will on right now, but when the general charges in, it means he has to retreat at some point, and that means excellent rear shot opportunity. So let's see if I can change my target to him. I think I do in like half a second here. Again, my, my, yeah, you can see now targeting this cab blob, nice, two volleys in here, gonna do a lot of damage, and yeah. And you can see Jav Cav, just charging in here, uh, they should really run away though, yeah, they run away, getting nice Dallin volleys here, again, rear shots, very valuable, Cappadocian Cav nicely doing a lot of damage to these heavy horse, um, my Galatian Swords are losing here, so this is not great, um, again, and my general not being touched at all, now he does bring his general out of range, okay, let's focus the next most valuable target, nice shots into this flank, I'm also getting the javelins into this heavy horse, and you can see, this chosen sword is the right side, so it's gonna get very nice shots, He's only shooting my archers right now with his slingers, and I feel like that's a definite waste, um, because these archers are, are going to take forever to die, even in this formation. If they were in super wide, they would literally never die. And now another thing is, quickly, let's pause. These heavy horse are in a terrible fight. There's no support for them. Um, and heavy horse versus Cappadocians with no support is really, really good for your Cappadocians. Um, if there's no levy free around, or you can get help with your archers and your infantry, and he can't, 
always accept those fights because Cappadocians are so good against Heavy Horse. It's uh, it's ridiculous. And I see I have support here. I have this nice uh, Jav Cav unit just shooting into the flank of these Heavy Horse. Gonna get a lot of kills. Super valuable. He does get a second charge. I already killed one Heavy Horse unit, but he is getting a second charge now. Um, so that might help him out, but it should still be good for me. His Oathworn's forced to commit here, otherwise this Chosen Sword is gonna die for nothing. You see, I'm getting into the flank here, and again, pressuring with these spears. Look, these spears get through a gap, and now they're gonna pressure off these slingers. This jab cab is gonna pressure off these slingers, so I don't want my archers getting shot so bad. Now they're shooting into the general, getting massive kills. This Cappadocian's like, yeah, there's like two units here, and they're all healthier, but I don't really care. This uh, naked sword gets a nice recharge. And basically, you can see my cab is just so healthy. Look, another heavy horse going down here. One's caught behind, just trying to defend his archers. And two are gonna die here in my javelins, or my... Uh, Archer, sorry, and my javelins, I suppose. We can see, look, down to 40 already, down to 35. Cappadocian Cap, yeah, it's only at 25, but it's still doing very well. I have another one back here at 30 men, and he literally has one healthy Cav left on the field. So, my goal was to focus Cav, and I did it very successfully. You can see, I didn't use my Cappadocians to charge infantry almost anywhere, and he had to do it in a lot of places um, because I was shooting up his, his units. So, that allows me to get way better kills on this cab. His general's almost dead here. Well, it's not 30 men, but half strength. I'm pressuring out his slingers. This cab is just chasing around um, horse archers. Really good positioning for you overall. And that's the key of the archers, is just make sure you're always shooting the right targets. Do not waste ammo, especially with the archers. They have so little ammo on shitty targets. You really need to be getting good angles or cab shots all the time. And you can see again, this Oathsworn is going to start to face backwards. And he's going to get shot in the back. And this naked sword can just cycle. Here he gets a levy free behind, but I have reserves to counter, so my archers are completely safe here. And nice frenzy charge here. Sacrificing a horse skirmisher that had no ammo just to tie down this um, slinger, kill it. And the, the noble horse can't really engage, I mean, it can, but there's a relation spew here, and my archers are threatening to shoot it. Another horse skirmisher, probably out of ammo, or close to it. And just gets behind, charging the slinger, wiping it out and it's completely winning for me. Again, my general, 57 men, 22 kills, hasn't really done much, but it's alive. And you can see this Cappadocian Cav, it's still fighting here, 26 against 12, it actually might uh, lose, but it killed a lot of men, tied them down, and now I know a horse comes and finishes it off. Archers now again getting right side shots and then the Spearman, which I just wanted to kill, so my Galatians can come forward. But anyway, all good. I uh, second winning my naked sword, by the way, and it kills off this uh, kills off this fight. So yeah, those are, that's one instance of archers. I think we might get a couple good um, examples of how to use the archers in some other replays, but those are sort of the key considerations with how I use my archers to shoot key targets. Always sh shoot targets that you're picking yourself, right? You want to be saying, this is the best target and I'm going to choose to shoot it um, because it's the best target. I'm not shooting just random units because I have to shoot something. Position your archers accordingly, get them on the flanks, get them in good angles, Say, uh, you can green at your infantry to get better angles, do whatever you need, but make sure you're maximizing the utility of your archers, uh, and I really didn't because I didn't spread them all the way out, um, so that's a mistake, and this guy only gets 7 kills because of it, but these guys did very well, so, and you can see his slingers did quite well, and they killed a lot of my spears, and those are valuable kills for our Verni because if they win the spear war even more heavily, they can use these spears to press ar around the flank and stuff, so, that's, uh, that's good. Next we have, I think, one more, um, yeah, one more with, uh, my Galatian that have one or Verni. Um, and this will kind of just talk about all-encompassing stuff, so we'll look at everything. Here I've brought a slightly different army. Alright, so, uh, this battle I have a slightly different army, I have one Galatian Raider, and the cost of the Galatian Raider is you get two levy Freemen and, and three Galatian Spears instead of four Galatian Spears and one levy Free. Pretty much the same, everything else is exactly the same with one Galatian Sword and one Naked Sword. Um, three, yeah, two Cappadocians, one Noble Horse, three Syrians, you can see my Syrians are spread out nicely here. Uh, so this Galatian Raider is slightly different, um, the utility of it, it's the one that wants to get behind because it can actually kill Slingers pretty effectively, and whereas these Horse Skirmishers 
are a little harder at that, but then you will have a horse skirmishers on the flank to prevent um, cattle flanks. And this is Alara playing with Arverni now, and he has four slingers, and he has three spear warriors and one levy freeman. He brought a dog, uh, interesting counter to these horse skirmishers, and they will kill the horse skirmishers very easily, but obviously it's a bit telegraphed. Um, he only has four heavy horse because he's brought two oath sword and four chosen swords. So that's another thing, right? You have to think about what's the the cost benefit for bringing different armies. And in this case, he's brought two oath sword, but that means the rest of his army is kind of lower tier. He only has four calves. So now my calf advantage is much safer. Um, I have these, you know, chav cav already getting shots under his calf. Kills four men in one volley. And now my cab is only 3 versus 4, and with my 3 jab cab, it's pretty even, because you can't... Another thing about the jab cab is you can never fully go around the flank with all 4 cab against jab cab, because you'll just lose your slingers at the same time, especially with the Galatian Raider around to recharge infantry and stuff. Um, you see, yeah, so here he's just having uh, trouble here. He turns his slingers around, another uh, counter to cab is just turning your slingers around, but then you just run your uh, archers up and start shooting stuff. Um, he releases the dogs, I uh, had to figure out which unit was getting targeted here, and yeah, so it's this unit. Uh, that's unfortunate, he should really go forward right now, while my, uh, horse archers are distracted, or my job cav. But let's get forward, because this battle is a little longer. Well, I did just like, okay, the dogs are chasing this unit, so what I'm gonna do is run the dogs all the way back, or, yeah, run the cab and therefore the dogs also behind my infantry and split the infantry kill the dogs. Worked uh, a little worse than I thought it would, but see, he's still harassing the rear. Again, it's completely viable to harass only the rear of units while you're not engaged yet, and the flanks are not really a thing. Force more units into the rear. You can see I have a levy free back here, a uh, spear warrior back here, and a dog uh, handler back here. So three units kind of defending his rear, um, and that's good because they'll be out of position for the mainline fight. So here come the dogs. Uh, yeah. Maybe not fundamental, but this is one way to deal with the dogs, I thought. Maybe it was because they were moving a little bit, but you can see the dog kind of just run through them. Uh, and now they're going to run through a second unit. And the cap goes, I just, uh, it's probably because I ran forward here, I really should have stopped. They weren't getting through, but then they do. And they're going to start messing with this horse skirmisher. Another thing is, leaving your job cab, if you have like three job cab like I do, one of them in reserve in your rear is excellent as well. In some situations, because it will prevent anything from getting in your rear lines, um, which is also useful. And you can kind of tactically deploy it to either flank, whereas cab that are on this flank cannot get to this flank, pretty much. Um, anyway, so I'm running forward here. Again, look at me completely ignoring his slingers. I do not give two fucks about his slingers. I'm going to run right past them, and I'm instantly targeting this heavy horse with my archers. My plan here is get rid of the cab and then we'll deal with the infantry kind of as needed. And these guys can also do good damage to infantry. You can see two kills on these chosen swords. Uh, it's acceptable. And let's see, do I bait out the jab volley? I do. So again, another thing these guys can do is just bait out jab volleys. You can see it's not going to get any kills here. Maybe two. No, not even. And now I only have one jab volley left. And that's another volley that can't be used in my Cappadocian. So I'm instantly shooting up this heavy horse. And that forces him to come forward. He's like, well, these guys are so loose, I can't really kill them with my slingers. I'm going to lose my heavy horse way faster. If he, if he puts his heavy horse all the way back here, then I can just charge his infantry. So he's got to come forward. Um, let's see. And again, now that the battle's about to start, you can see my cavalry on the flank. This unit is dying to the dogs, unfortunately. And this cavalry unit is kind of behind, forcing this unit out of position. Here, I completely do something stupid. I retreat my unit um, when it should just charge in anyway. You get a nice job of value here. It goes for a second charge, but Alara is doing the right thing. He's sling he's using his slingers all on this Capitocia cab. He's focusing it, and it will die very, very quickly. Especially because it's a good job of volume. He also baited two cab charges out for nothing. So I'm like, shit, I gotta just dip. Takes another jab volley here. Very poor Capitocia use. But uh, as a trade, I will shoot up his heavy horse with three Syrians. So this heavy horse is gonna die pretty quickly. Negator gets a nice charge in here. He's using his Cappadocians very, or his heavy horse very aggressively, which is fine, uh, since those units don't have javelins. Um, but it will mean that I get some kills on them, especially when this horse skirmisher comes up behind. And this naked sword still didn't get charged directly, so it kills a lot of chosen swords. Um, next up, next target is this Oathorn. It is frontal shots, but he's repositioning, so it actually ends up being very nice for me. And the next thing is I want to pressure these slingers. Uh, they're too close to his infantry. One thing you can do with Syrians, um, I really should have mentioned this in the previous game, 
um, is let's say let's go somewhere where there's no entry uh, there's entry line here right guys they're they're fighting uh oh, we're fighting we're fighting okay uh, I want to shoot an oath sworn that's like over here let's leave my Syrians at 150 range to this oath sworn because what's that mean his slingers are like back here or something they physically can't shoot my slingers my slingers are my archers sorry now my archers are basically immortal nothing can hit them if he wants to hit them he'll have to be inside of his oath horn shooting and he's going to lose men to the infantry fight so by keeping your um your missile units at 150 range from whenever you're shooting it basically implies that the enemy missiles can't shoot back and in the case like this where i have three series that don't want to be focused that's exactly what i should be doing um and now his slingers are obviously very close here so i can just pressure them first um and that will become viable here he's chasing a heavy his heavy horse is chasing the storm skirmisher uh he decides not to do it which is wise in the end this Galatian leash <laughs> Grander charges into the dog handlers and just grabs them. And you can see now these are nice right sided shots on this um, oaf. And I'm just gonna get a nice charge in here. He does get a charge, but I'm shooting him in the flank. Oh no, I actually come out the last second. I pulled back. It's like going this Cappadocian cav. Now I charge back in. It didn't have any javelins. Crucial thing, right? This is like the most micro intensive thing that's probably possible in the game. What you can do in an infantry fight, or even with spears, is the spears run up, they throw javelins. Once they throw the javelins, only then do you retreat with your infantry, cycle in the cav unit, and then follow up with the infantry. It's a lot of micro, but it ensures that the cav unit does not take any javelins, and it's super effective. Um, and you can do that ad infinitum, basically, as many times as you want, um, because you can always just use your infantry to absorb the javelin volley, basically. Um, so anyway, this competition cap is pretty much dead. It's still at 20 men, but at the same time, I'm chasing away a couple heavy horse units. He sends three heavy horse back for this Galatian Raider. Definitely a, a mistake there. And I use this to my advantage. There's no cav on the field. I'm going to get super aggressive. Charging is general. I charge this O-Sword getting flank shots. And just look how effective the cavalry charge is. 20 men. But look what it does. Glacian Legionnaire is at 97, Oathorn at 70. They lost that fight already. Here my Glacian Legionnaire is 106, Chosen Sword 73, and Fort at 93. Decent fight for your Glacian Legionnaires. Spears, again, I've managed to keep my spears in reserve. And now look at them pressuring the flank here. Um, very useful. And a Chosen Sword getting charged by my Cav. Again, 60 men in this Cappadocian didn't take any javelin shots. Now my Glacian Swords can charge in. And they'll lose, but they'll still do good damage. Um... So because there's no cab on the field here, I'm getting super aggressive. Here he's going to get a nice charge with his heavy horse. Nothing I can really do about that. My Galatians, uh, my naked warriors that are rather kind of absorbed that fight though. Um, so here I calculated that basically it's worth me using my cab a bit more aggressively to win this infantry fight because he A, he has only four cab. So that means my cab advantage is not as bad, and B, he has four chosens and two oaths. His entire army is fucking infantry, so I need to do better in the infantry war than if I just let my units charge in and die. I'll lose in too many places, basically. Now I get a Galatian Legionnaire in here, um, killing off his chosen sword very easily. This Galatian sword is still 100 men, so it's still useful. These shots are pretty shitty, uh, but I have to I have to do it. Oath sword's at 90 men because he got charged by my gen. These Galatian Legionnaires are literally tied with an Oath sword because I got one charge with my Noble Horse that lost me six men. That's very, very valuable kills. And now his, his cab is behind. He forgot about two cav. Again, chasing the horse skirmishers is never really valuable. And these guys are just posting up. He's going to use two fucking two spear warriors to defend against two horse skirmishers. That's the value of, of Jav Cav, basically. These guys could be pushing through, but no. They're instead waiting to try to catch cav that he's never going to catch. My infantry is now dominating. I killed off this Oathorn literally. This Oathorn literally already died. How fast is that? How effective is that? These Chosen Swords are all losing. He has one Chosen here at 70 men, but this Galatian's at 80, so it's much better. Archer's focusing down the gen. General's getting rear charged by and the Galatian Legionnaire. This battle's completely over. My Archers are untouched. And again, it's so worth it to cause chaos in someone's backlines with like a shitty spear that's already dead. Um, so that your Archers can get free shots on everything. Basically right now, this Galatian Spear is behind. He's got to use cav and slingers, he's got to run his slingers away, charging the cav unit. Meanwhile, my archers are like sitting here, firing rapid fire, um, killing anything in their path. So that's super valuable. 
um, to get units in behind you. Especially a cheap unit like a Galatian Sphere, you're like, oh, that unit's pretty much dead anyway. Let's cause some chaos. And by doing so, I get to kill off his Oathsworn Gen pretty much. Let me free just dip from this fight and uh, charge my Galatian Legionaries here. They killed this Chosen Sword easy peasy. My general still at 60 men, pretty much 55 men. And my Cappadocian here, literally 56 men. I haven't used my Cav in any dangerous fights except for that one Cappadocian that I completely wasted. So, yes, he has two Cavs that he forgot about, but I have two Cavs that are, are completely healthy and better. So, that's completely fine for me. Even if these Cavs were active, they would be completely bamboozled by my Cav, pretty much. Chases my Cav, just shoot it up. Any Cav like this, super low HP, they're instant, instantly going to die. My Galatian Legionaries are winning everywhere. Galatian Swords get into this uh, Spear Warrior, and this is completely over. It's cleanup time. Yeah, just keep my cab out of range. Now I go for the charge here. Um, I didn't actually want to pull through here or anything because it was a tournament final, so I just pulled back because I knew I had won already. Um, but <laughs> so that's a quick um, overview. But yeah, that's that's the very that's the value of using archers properly, using jab cab, and, and keeping your cab alive um, until the late game. Uh, I think that's back battle kind of had it all. Um, so that's good. And now I'm going to show you guys one more battle where I have uh, Arverni, just to show the other side of the coin. How do I use my cab in that fight? How do I maximize the utility of the cab advantage when all your cab are worse, but you have more numbers? I think that's... don't doubt. Yeah. Alright, so we're here with another one. This time I'm our Verni Ragnar's Galatia. And Ragnar brings a bit of an unconventional um, build. He brings two Syrians and two Slingers, which is totally valid. Um, you get four missile units, so more firepower essentially. And they cost the same, pretty much. Two Slingers cost the same as one uh, Syrian. He only has two Galatian Raiders, uh, because basically he traded in a Slinger, a Syrian for two Slingers, and lost a, a, ca a Jab Cav unit. But he has two Cappadocians, General, he has four Glacian Legionnaires, he has two uh, Glacian Swords, and he has quite a decent spear line with four Glacian Spears and one Levy Free. Alright, so let's uh, skip forward. And I'll kind of talk about the other side of the coin, which is defending against Jab Cav properly. I mean, we've kind of talked about what do Jab Cav want to do, so it's pretty obvious, like, how do we defend against that? I mean, there's not much you can do in this situation, you just have to use your Levy Free pretty much <laughs> as the least valuable use that you have. And these are like Galatian Raiders, so they're obviously dangerous in melee, but less dangerous to Cav. And you can see Ragnar goes behind early here, but again, there's nothing pressuring me on this flank. We can go over my army quickly. I've got uh, five Cav, or four Heavy Horse, one Noble Horse, one Osworn, one Celtic, four um, Chosen Swords, obviously. Only three Slingers. Um, three Slingers, and then I have three Spear Warriors. And two let me f and three let me free. So the full twenty units, uh, pretty balanced army overall. Only three slingers though, not four, uh, because I was able to get more um, let me free because of that. I could have gone for three, uh, two let me free and four slingers because I have two chevrons on this Celtic, um, but I decided not to do that. Basically, you need the let me free in this battle. I thought he was gonna bring more jab cab as well. Um, but anyway, so we're positioning here. Ragnar has a big missile advantage. You can see one thing that Rag's really good at is getting that flank, those flank shots. Uh, these are left-sided flank shots, but it doesn't even matter because eventually you can push the flank with these units and get rear shots or just shoot up Cav. You can see I'm using, at this point in the battle, we're not even engaged yet, so I can use all three of my Levy Free to defend my rear because what that allows me to do is make sure I lose zero Cav before the Cav fight, uh, the, the actual battle starts. And obviously these Levy Free are still in good position to help out the main line fight. They're very close. Um, so yeah, we're just positioning. My slingers are in range and his archers aren't, so I'm just taking pot shots as Galatian Spears. Galatian Spears have only uh, 45 armor, so they die very, very quickly, and we saw that in other games too. So I'm just taking three shots on his units. Here I'm shooting this slinger because it's in a thick formation, so it's good kills. I can waste a lot of ammo. And I'm running to this flank because I'm, wa I'm my, oath is on my oath horn's on this flank, so I'm trying to pressure. That's another thing. When you have this 
right, our Vernie is the one that's rushing, you want to pressure in, in a specific area. One, flank to the right because you're taking left sided, un, uh, shielded sided shots, and put your put your best units on this flank and use it to crush that flank and then sweep across. Uh, again, I'm very happy to take this fight. I actually have my Celtic up in the front lines here to use it as a spear because my Lily Free lose so bad to his um, Galatian Spears, obviously. So I'm just going to use this uh, Celtic Warrior to win against the Galatian Spears. And then here, Spear Warrior is going to kill off Galatian Spears. So I'm winning this um, front, uh, frontal engagement. And I'm leaving my guys, I think they're out of range. Maybe Assyrians are able to shoot up my Chosen. So that's not good. But you can see my Oathsworn is out of range since it's on the flank here. And you can see, hmm, I wonder where I'm going to push. Two Heavy Horse and my Oathsworn here. Running to gang up on these units. Running my Oathsworn, uh, my Chosen is out of range, but uh, he gets a few shots. And now my Slingers decide to focus this unit. I could focus maybe a Galatian Legionary in here instead. But one thing that he's done a good job with Ragnar is I'm pulling back my Chosen to get out of range. So what does he do? He just starts charging in his Galatian Swords. A free charge, he can cycle out and help his Spears win the Spear fight. Because look how badly they're losing right now. Yeah, really bad. Here it's actually really bad because I shot up this unit. Whereas here it's definitely not as bad. And here it's close. But he will lose those fights uh, eventually. And meanwhile my Cav, unlike the other games where I've gotten free shots with my Jab Cav, have literally, my Cav have taken no losses yet. So that's really useful. Now, here I'm, again, you have to be as a Verni willing to take some, um, some Jab volleys in order to charge into units. Here I try to bait it out, which is maybe a bit ambitious. Let's see what happens. It's actually pretty close. Mm, not great, but what it means is that I only lose three men here, and this heavy horse gets a free charge with no javelin. So that means that this uh, Galatian Legionary is going to take a lot of damage. He doesn't try to pull back, which is smart. You just have to accept that. And my Oathsworn is getting in here for free. Now my um, Chosen Swords get a free javelin ball on these Galatian Swords. Here, Galatian Swords versus Galatian Legionary is not great, but he did get I uh, did get the second charge. So that's very valuable, because um, it will make my Chosen Swords don't get hit by the charge of these Galatian Legionaries, but they're still going to lose, because Galatian Legionaries are insane. Here he uses a Cappadocian to charge aggressively in here, and again, it wasn't terrible, he didn't take any losses, but I'm just going to hit him with a counter charge here. I'm going to lose this fight, obviously, pretty badly now, because he um, hit my levy free, but it's fine. Here, again, he got the first charges everywhere, but that means I got the second charges on his infantry. Slingers are shooting up one Syrian, maybe not the best target again, probably this blob would be a great target, because it's where I'm trying to push through. These Levy Freeman, I charge them in to try to get a free Javelin Volley, but I will need to retreat them eventually um, to help screen against these uh, Jav Cav. But, so I've done a good job in the early stages here, I'd say. I've gotten my infantry in pretty clean. Here he starts to shoot my general, not good for me at all. Again, that's a very valuable target. But I got my infantry in pretty clean, and got second charges. That's our Vernie's first goal, get the second charges where possible. I also juke the Javelin Volley over here, so my health, Heavy Horse are pretty healthy. Um, you can see his Cappadocians lost 12 men, I lost... 28 men, so it's not great for me, but it's not terrible. Here I'm losing this heavy horse in while my Levy Free is still alive. I'm trying to kill as many of these heavy uh, Cappadocians as I can. You can see 2-2 two to two losses, that's great for me. Um, but the next phase of the battle is I need to penetrate somewhere. I'm waiting on this flank because my Oathsworn's there, but I need to get to these archers. They're going to cause massive damage to my uh, unengaged units. Here I mischarge this unit. It really should charge into this Galatian Sword. And my spears, you can see one thing that I'm doing, and Ragnar is also doing it to his credit, is pulling out our spears and using them as reserves or like pressure units that can pressure archers out of the out of the battle. You can see his Syrians are actually taking quite a bit of damage, that's nice. Um, but now that he runs them away, I want to focus this unit because this unit is the only healthy unit that is like breaking through. I'm winning here, I'm winning here, I'm maybe losing here eventually, but winning at, at the moment. This Glacial Legion, uh, sword is the only unit not where I'm losing. Maybe here too I'm losing this Glacial Legion here. But I have two chosen swords here, so I should be fine. So what I do, focus up. Infantry units that break through are easy focus targets because you can see this Celtic's so small that he wraps around and now rear shots for days. Um, that's a classic tactic you can do with hoplites and stuff obviously as well. Here he uses the Cappadocian Cap kind of aggressively for my taste because that's, I get a free charge here. He does have support, but... I have two Cappadocians, uh, two Heavy Horse, sorry, so I can just cycle. Now he decides to bring his gen over here. Ah, uh, so this is a pretty commendable move. He has a Galatian Legionnaire in reserve, so that's very nice for him, because I'm breaking through in a lot of places. But I have two, two to one Galatian, uh, sorry, Chosen Swords here, so I have a counter to this unit at least. And you can see this Galatian Sword, now that's getting sniped, is easily dying, or at least losing in morale. 
now he has a shit ton of units over here. Um, I'm breaking through with my Spear Warriors. Again, these guys probably have one Jive Volley too. And my Oathworn is crucially here. And it can break through against this Galatian Leisure and help support this Blob. Uh, if my Heavy Horse can just hold on. Over here, he could be using his uh, Galatian Rangers aggressively. He routes this Slinger so he can ki kill it with his Rangers. Um, and I have two Cav here. But now is the time where I have to decide what I want to do. And I see that his Cav is all tied down here. And I have a Spear unit that can block his retreat. Here, this unit just runs away, chasing these units around. And now my Cav is getting through. Um, nice from his Raiders here, getting nice kills on my um, Heavy Horse. Not much I can do about that. Killed off this Glacian Sword, and you can see I'm winning the Infantry War very handily. Uh, this unit just gets destroyed though, because I was too slow. But what does it do? It's creating space. It's creating space for my Chosen Sword at 110 men, very healthy, and my General to bust through here. I don't really care about this blob. I'm tying it down with a Spear Warrior, and I can have support nearby uh, when this Oathworm wins. Charging this Spear with my uh, Cav. This Cav is dead, so I might as well use it to just tie down these Spears. And this Cappadocian now charges in, and all these Chosen Swords will do pretty decently against this Cav unit. And my General is just busting through behind. This, oh, this Glacian uh, leaves me a route from the rear charge, and now my bust is complete, and now I can surround. This Spear Warrior is completely useless because I have a cap unit here, or a sword unit here, so it's dying. My general's healthy, charges into the Cappadocian Cap, gets good damage. Oathorn is in support. His Raiders, though, are going to be a big nuisance here, and my general's kind of caught in, so I have no choice but to accept the gen on gen engagement. I do have a ton of support. Look at these units coming. So I say, you know what, fuck it. I know I'm going to lose my gen here, but I'll take out your gen, and I'll. I have, like, this cab is behind, chasing off archers. And I have two more cav in support, so I really have a lot more cav at this stage of the battle. So I'm happy to um, take this. Now, this unit does get caught, but what is it going to do? It's going to allow these Oathsworn to get in here. I think they get a jab volley. Yeah, they get a jab volley, and they're going to kill a shit ton of Cappadocians here. And again, my general is completely dead. My archers or my slingers are shooting these uh, units. Very useful. And char I'm not. No, is this his unit? No, I'm charging into his Glacian Raiders there to push them back. His generals engaged now with my support. Which I have, again, he doesn't really here, except for his Glacian Raider, which are a good support, of course. Um, but my general can retreat safely. His general now is able to retreat, but he loses a lot of men here. My support is now busting through. Look, levy free, free unit, bust through, killing slingers. His general's just died. And one more fundamental that I could talk about that I haven't really discussed at all is timing your engagements properly. And what I mean by that is not your initial engagement, but, like, when you need to make an action play, let's say flanking around, trying to route archers and slingers, or making it a big move against any infantry that will win you the game, you want to do it at the right moment. When units are losing, or the general has just died, they are much easier to route, and row 2 units do not route easily, let's be honest. But when the general has died, that's a crucial time for routing a shit ton of enemy units. You can see I'm going to do it here. Um, slingers, facing you in a contact route, or they should, um, because the general recently died. They're not going to last, they instantly route. This is on slow, um... You know, you can see these guys are instantly wavering. If I touch them, they're going to rout. And now, I'm just shooting you, these guys. Look at this. 34 Galatian Raiders, but they're being shot. And had just lost some men. They rout. Everything's wavering. Army losses. And that's the game. So, that's sort of the basic fundamentals. It's not everything in... in even though fundamentals, obviously. But it's a couple of the key um, facets of the game. So, let's just uh, talk about them quickly before we end the video here. Um, so what are the key things, key takeaways, let's say, from this matchup and what I've been talking about for the last four replays? Number one, I would say, is jab cav, flank units, that kind of thing. How do we position them to ideally maximize the space they create and the, the, limit, the limits they place upon your enemy? Um, and we saw that with the first couple replays with the uh, mercenary horse skirmishers. Put them on the flanks. You do want some in the rear if you can afford it because it forces units to go back there. But on the flanks, they prevent enemy flanking. Very useful. And again, think about where can I use these guys best. And what am I scared of? As Galatia, I was scared about um, heavy horses running around in my rear. And you kind of saw that in that last game. Maybe I didn't point it out so so well. But his um, Ragnar's uh, Galatian Raiders were behind. And my heavy horse got around the flank pretty much for free. Imagine if they're on the flank. I can't do that. This is basically impossible. I'll lose so many men. So, Jabkav, that's number one. Number two, Infantry War. 
and with the infantry war goes cav survivability. How much of my cav can I afford to lose to enemy javelins? Because it's so valuable to charge cav into infantry and then follow up with your own infantry. It's the most powerful tactic in the game. But you're taking losses, heavy losses from enemy skirmish fire, enemy javelins, maybe two units of javelins could potentially get on that, and enemy cav charges. All for one charge into one infantry unit. Is it worth it? Sometimes, absolutely, but you have to be careful and choose the right moments. So that's cop survivability. Also, make sure your cav is safe from enemy missile fire, which goes hand in hand with number three, using archers properly. Right side shots, rear shots, cav shots. Those are the three key shots for your elite missiles. When you want to take the archer war is another crucial thing. Four slingers, remember, they can tie almost anything. Um, so you don't want to archer war them, especially with archers. If you have three Balearics, I could see it being worth it, but again, just sit your archers at 150 range so the slingers can't shoot them, and then just out damage the enemy slingers with your elite missiles. Simple as that. Um, with four slingers, however, usually a good idea to take the archer war, um, if the enemy allows you to. Otherwise, you can focus units, and again, four slingers can focus very effectively, um, kill units, especially in the rear. If you get rear shots, uh, slingers with their AP damage just annihilate those kind of units. Um, so those are the three main things and we also talked about briefly just timing your engagement properly. How can we take advantage of enemy morale debuffs, general dying, units losing in combat. Those are the times you want to strike because routing units is basically free picks, you know, and that allows you to bust through in places. Um, but yeah, hopefully this was like somewhat useful. I didn't really think it through that much. I had some idea of what I wanted to talk about. Um, this matchup is great for some fundamental aspects of, uh, of the game, and other matchups are good for other uh, other things, so I'll probably talk about um, maybe some Eastern stuff or whatever later on. But I think those are like the, the sort of things that I'm always thinking about when I'm playing a competitive game. How can I maximize cast survivability? How can I use my archers best? That kind of stuff. And it's not easy. Um, a lot of it's micro-intensive, but those, I think, are the key factors, and if you are able to get better at those things, it's, uh, it's definitely a way to improve very quickly. So, uh, hopefully it was helpful. Thanks for watching, y'all. Um, see you guys in the next video. Peace.